OK, uh, this is an example related to the practice CAD test for engineering design uh, in 2021. Um, in week three, we set this practice CAD test where we asked people to design an ornament that looked like this. Um, and roughly it's two um, three dimensional letters on uh, round wooden pegs, which sit in a, a sheet metal stand as a, as a base. And we asked you to produce the same thing using your initials. So mine, although this is ED for engineering design, mine, which I'm about to do now, will be BL for Ben Lishman. Um, and we gave you, the, there's information, uh, all of this is available on uh, the VLE, um, but we gave you a, an approximate drawing um, and a rough set of dimensions. We don't want you to feel you have to do exactly this. Um, but the thing that I will just remember is that this letter is 100 millimeters high and the pegs have a 10 millimeter diameter. So I'm going to try and remember those things and we'll see how we go. OK, um, let's make a start. Uh, I'm going to start probably by um, making the two letters uh, and I'll make them new components. It's going to work best in general if I treat everything as a different component. So I'll call this letter B. Um, I guess one strategy uh, here is just to think um, Part modeling is probably the easiest thing we're going to do. Uh, it's the thing we're most familiar with. And so um, I should take the more complicated letter and do it in the easier way. One of them has to be part model, one of them to be sculpted. The letter B is a somewhat complicated letter to sculpt because it's got those two loops in it. So I'm just going to do that as a sketch instead. OK, uh, I will start that and then when it's done, We'll know where we stand. We want it to be a hundred millimeters high. I don't know how good I am at the moment at drawing a letter B. It might not come out quite as I want it to. Um, I've got the line tool here, as you can see. Um, I'm going to hit escape. So I've got that line and then I'm going to use L to get another line. I could do the same thing by clicking up there, but the letter L on my keyboard gets it done. And I'll make that line. Um, and now what I'm going to try and do maybe is to put in two arcs and see how that works. Um, again, it's a little bit trial and error here. Um, you, you usually just want to make the arc and see how it looks. Um, so I'm going to do uh, point one is, is the end of the straight lines I've just drawn. Point two, I'm going to try. Uh, here and then if I hmm, so so my problem is um, you can see it's locking uh, if, if you look at what's happening down here this is locking to a tangent which is what I want that's what you'd have in a letter B rather than a corner between the straight line and, and the curve um, but I don't think that's going to stick out far enough in a way in any case, I'm going to accept that. Um, and then what I'll do is put in another dimension on this line and make it slightly further. If we make that 30, that looks like it's going to have about the right dimensions for a letter B. Maybe I'll make it 25. Um, and then I'm going to do the same here. Again, I'm using D for dimension on my keyboard, but you can also get the dimension tool from create uh, sketch dimension there. And uh, so I've made this, I, I guess I want some symmetry. I could have done that using a mirror option, but I'm just going to draw everything directly. I'm going to do the same three point arc between there and there, and the same thing that locks it to a tangent. And that looks about like a letter B to me. And uh, now I need to um, cut some holes in it effectively. And I'm just going to sketch out what I think those are going to look like. Um, I guess I don't want rectangular holes, do I? That's not. Uh, I used Control Z there to to undo. Uh, let's try again, but we'll make them not rectangular. 
escape to stop drawing a line. I'll draw that line and then I'll do another one of these three point arcs and just try to get it to look about right. Yep, something like that's actually fine, isn't it? Uh, and I'll do the same thing again. I could copy that or mirror it somehow, um, but I'm actually just going to uh, redraw the same thing. It's the easiest way to do it here. It's not a terribly complicated bit of uh, CAD creation, so redrawing it is, is fine. Um, I think that's just fine as a letter B. Uh, and you can, of course, spend all day tweaking things and tuning things, and typographers um, make a whole career out of um, creating letters to look exactly like they want them to. So I think we'll never come to something that's perfect on this. I'm going to say that's just fine. So I'll finish the sketch uh, and then extrude it. And I think the extrusions in the drawing were 20 millimeters, and that kind of looks about right to me. OK, I'm pretty happy with my letter B. I'll come back later and do materials and things, um, but for now that seems fine. I guess maybe something I should do is just to save this. Um, so I will call it uh, practice test work through and save that. Um, and then I've got a file name for it now. OK, I'll go back to the top level here and create another new component. And this component will be the letter L, the other one of my initials. And the rule was that this has to be done using the sculpting tools, which are created through this create form option here. Um, one of the things we've talked about in class is having a look at all the different things you can do. Uh, I briefly looked at something involving a torus as a kind of um, way of doing a letter A in class uh, earlier this week. But I think I'm just going to stick to the box. Uh, that's you know always probably the simplest way to start. I'm going to draw on this plane here. Um, one thing that can happen is sometimes it's hard to click on the actual plane. If I just click and hold there, so what I did was I clicked and then just kept my mouse button depressed, and then this menu comes up. And if I select the one that says X, Y, I know I'm drawing on the, the kind of core plane of the, the whole thing. Um, ah, that wasn't quite where I wanted to click. Uh, in fact, if I make it a two-point rectangle, it'll work a bit better in this context. Uh, so I'm going to click there and there. Um, and now I've got options about how I do all of this. Um, I guess I want, first of all, some symmetry. And the symmetry needs to be across that line there, this, this direction. A kind of front to back symmetry, I guess you could think of it. It's not width, it's height. And you can see these green lines appearing, and I'm just trying to find the one I want. Um, so if that's height, the other thing that I might want to do, I'm going to need to drag something out to make the, the horizontal bar of the L. So I want to have slightly more um, faces available along the height so I can drag out something just down at the bottom rather than dragging out half of the, um, the sculpted form. So I'm just going to experiment again and see if this kind of does the thing I want to. OK, the height is the is that one into the page, which isn't what I want. Uh, let's try this one. That looks a bit better to me. That's um, kind of what I want. I could go. It's best to keep an even number, I think, probably, um, although we're not relying on symmetry, so maybe it doesn't matter so much. I could go with eight or six. Um, I guess now if I can somehow pull out this um, face here horizontally, I'll have about what I want. So six looks pretty good. Um, but you can see already, I guess, with, when you're doing this sculpting, it, it, it's not a step-by-step -step thing. You've got to keep looking at it and deciding, is that what I want? Um, is that going to work? And, and um, taking it almost like you would if you were sculpting something with your hands, 
where it's an organic process that you keep on adapting very slightly rather than something where you can write down a list of steps to follow. Uh, I'm going to say OK at this point. And now I've got most of what I want. Um, the letter L is, is an easy one to do here, I think, so I've made my life easier. Um, I guess ah, one thing that I've done is I've made this slightly too narrow. Uh, and so um, different ways I can deal with that. I can actually just grab the whole thing uh, if I do this and then look at it from the right hand view uh, and modify and stretch it horizontally like so. And now I think that looks better. Um, that is approximately the right width. Is it the right width? I'm happy with that width now. Uh, and I'll align everything later. But it, it doesn't stand out as being hugely different to the letter B in terms of its width. It's just sitting on a slightly different central axis. OK, that's good. Uh, again, I'm using uh, Shift and my middle mouse button to, to do that kind of manipulation of uh, the angles I'm looking at things from. And you can also use the view cube up here. Uh, next, I am going to modify this, and I think all we really want to do is to pull out this uh, panel here. You'll see it's symmetrically chosen, this panel here. Um, I'm just going to show you what happens if I only choose one side, even though it's symmetric. Sometimes what you can get into is that it kind of gives you a, a dip in between uh, on the line of symmetry. Um, isn't um, stretched out in the same way. So I tend to, uh, when I'm doing this kind of thing, actually select both sides of the line of symmetry if I remember to, and then it just works slightly better. Um, I'm going to pull that out. Um, that's fine at the moment for a letter L. I guess if we look at it from the front view, we'll have a good sense of it. I'm happy enough with that. And then what I'm going to do is to try to pull this, uh, I guess, this pair of lines here. Uh, again, I'll choose the modify option. Again, I'm going to look at it from the front view to make things slightly easier. Um, the danger is that I pull everything so that it all gets entangled. If I go too far, I'm sort of making these uh, grid lines cross over each other, and that can cause problems later on. So instead, what I'm going to do is actually um, not choose to do that particular modification, cancel it. And instead, I'm going to try doing this kind of thing, where I drag across a whole load of um, faces and then pull them all at once. Um, and maybe just rotate. Not sure that's helping. Uh, cancel that. Um, let's keep thinking. What happens if I rotate this face here? Let's try that. You can see I'm sort of experimenting as I go along. Yeah, that's starting to look better. That's going to make it an, an L shape. Um, maybe I can also just pull this in a bit. Uh, this point, if I pull that down and then zoom out a bit, is that, I guess, you know, you could, you could definitely say that's a letter L already. What I'm actually going to do is just um, pull this uh, end of the, the kind of the toe of the L up a bit um, to give me that almost right angle that's probably more typographically accurate. And I might just pull this point down a bit as well. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that um, as, as being roughly a sculpted capital letter L. And I'm going to say finish form. And that worked fine. And now again, I'll go back. You can see uh, this is uh, the B is kind of ghosted out. 
because I'm looking at the, the letter L on its own in the model tree, and that's what this radio button does. And then if I go back to the top level, I see all the components together. And yeah, that's all, all looking fine to me. Um, although having said that, this letter B, it looks, everything to the right of this line looks fine, but this gap, I just want it to be slightly bigger. I've decided, uh, maybe I'm just being fussy, but I can keep doing this. I can go back into the letter B, and actually this is very simple. I can do a press pull on this face and maybe pull it out two millimeters more, uh, and then that, that fussiness uh, will be satisfied, and I feel like I'm slightly happier with that letter B. So feel free to keep going back and adjusting things that you're doing. Okay, uh, next I'm gonna build the base and then I'll put the whole lot together uh, using the pegs and then the, the assembly tools. Um, so we'll say create new component. This component is the base. Um, and I guess what I want to do is to go straight into sheet metal tools, sketch and sketch on this plane here. I'm gonna be able to move everything around later um, because uh, we're in um, the, we, we've got multiple different components and components can all be moved around and then locked in place with joints. But it's sometimes useful just to put everything roughly where you want it right from the start, even though you're gonna fix it in place later. Um, and then we want the base to be about 100 by 200. Uh, that's that dimension. And I'm gonna say, okay on that. And I'll finish that sketch. Um, we're in the sheet metal environment. This might be a good time uh, early on in the sheet metal environment just to set the sheet metal rules before we start turning this into a three-dimensional thing. Um, so I'm going to say, ah, I think we have to make it three-dimensional before we add it into this design. Let's just have a look. Uh, I clicked on the pencil next to steel millimeters. Um, I'll call this uh, PT for practice test. And I'm just going to make that 2.0 millimeters uh, rather than um, 2.5 millimeters and say OK. And now I think we're going to default to 2 millimeter thick steel for this particular design. Uh, so let's check that. I'll say close the sheet metal rules. In some ways, the important thing here is to um, keep going back and checking that we're getting this right. Um, so this has pulled in the uh, slightly annoying thing where I can't, because of the size of things, I'm going to have to scroll sideways. But you can see it's using that two millimeter thickness. This isn't the... Uh, most straightforward thing to do, but um, if necessary, I guess I could say OK. Um, and then another thing that I could do is to go inspect, measure, and just check the distance from that top face to that bottom face and find that it's two millimeters there. So, you know, that's the kind of thing where it helps just to play around a bit. Uh, the other thing that I'm just going to do now. Uh, before we go too much further on the base, is just to move these letters a bit out of the way, because I don't want them to confuse me when I'm working on the base. And then we'll bring them back to where they need to be later. Um, okay, so the idea with this base is that it kind of folds around to make a box, and then we'll put some holes in the top of the box. Um, okay, so when I started doing some more Fusion told me that I've moved some of the components around. I wanted to do that. That was deliberate, and I want them to stay where I put them, so I click Capture Position. And now I can start adding in some flanges to make this box. So the first flange, you've got to make sure you're picking the right edge, otherwise it'll not work as well, is there. And I'm going to go down... Um, I'm going to go down 10 millimeters on most of the flanges and then a bit further on the one that wraps around underneath. So I'll go down 10 on there. I'm not going to change any of the 
the standards here. Although, as always, you can just try clicking on things and see what difference it makes and how it looks. So feel free to play around with that in your own time. But I'm just going to take the, the default. Uh, and I'll keep going. Another flange here. It's going to be slightly messy at the corners. Um, you can see I've got this kind of stub here that isn't so great. Um, so I'm going to say OK and keep going with this. And then I'll come back and look at that later and just try and tidy it up a bit. Um, and this one comes down 10. And we've got the stub again. And then this back face. Uh, I'm going to come down slightly further. Let's try. Uh, let's try 12 and see how it goes. And then we can always adjust that later. And say OK. And then I'm going to put in another flange off this back face uh, all the way across there. Just look at it from the right angle to make sure I'm pulling it far enough. Uh, 95. What happens if I go uh, 100? Not 1,000. 100 is too far. OK. I guess what's happening is the flanges are kind of taking away two millimeters at a time. And so uh, to get it to line up roughly how I want it to, I could go 96 or maybe even 97. So it comes a bit. I'll go 96. Um, you can, you know, you're not going to get marked down for, for the length of that flange. It's a design choice, I think, in this kind of ornament. So I'll say, OK, and I'll be pretty happy with that. And just kind of look around, make sure it's doing what I want it to. Um, so we said there are these funny little stubs on the end. I can get rid of them uh, using press pull, I guess. Um, but maybe I'll wait until I've moved back into the, the modeling environment to do that. Um, I'm also going to want to create two holes for the pegs. So I'll sketch on the top of this uh, and create two circular holes. Um, they are 10 millimeter diameter. Um, I'm just going to measure from this line to this line. Uh, 192. Um, so I want this distance here to be 192 over 4. And this distance here to be 192 over 4. Is that where I want my pegs to be spaced? It's roughly where I've put my letters already. So I'm, I'm happy enough with that. And then I guess the distance from the peg to the center is the same as the distance from the peg to the edge. So we've got a quarter of the distance here, a quarter of the distance here to the center of the plate, a quarter of the distance here, and a quarter of the distance here. Again, it's a design choice. Um, you, you might do it differently, but I guess I'm, I'm happy enough with that. I'll say finish sketch. And then I want to extrude those uh, two holes that I've just made. Um, I want to cut downwards, and I just want to make sure I'm not going into the bottom plate. Um, normally, I might do that by using, uh, instead of a distance, a, use this two object option and then choose the bottom face of the, the top of the plate, choose the bit I want to cut to. But it's kind of hard to get to that now that I've boxed everything up in one bit of sheet metal. So instead, I'm just going to do a distance. And since I know that the the plate is two millimeters thick. If I just say cut uh, 2.5 millimeters, then I think that'll work OK. And we'll have uh, holes ready for the peg in the top. And what I'm looking at through there is actually the, the bottom face. 
Um, just to absolutely confirm, it, it's kind of hard to see for sure whether I've got that right. So I'm going to do one more bit of inspecting, uh, which is to put on a section analysis. So I went inspect and then chose section analysis. I'm going to put it on that plane. And now I can see pretty clearly when I use that section analysis uh, that I've got um, the holes cut in the top of the box, but not in the bottom of the box, which is what I wanted. Um, to turn off the section analysis, it's, it's now a, a thing I can refer to in the model tree over here. So I'm just going to turn it off using that um, eyeball and then we're we're looking good. OK, one last thing I wanted to do is get rid of these stubby little corners. For that, I'm going to go back to solid modeling. I'm going to use press pull on that face there. And I think I need to go back four millimeters. I'll say OK. Again, you know, we're not going to um, look too in detail at this in, in your uh, assessment. Um, I think you could reasonably say that it was a design choice to leave these on and I'm making a design choice to, to take them off. I guess there'll be one more there. OK, let's get things back to a reasonable orientation and just have a last look at that base and check that it's something like I wanted it to be. struggling to get it into the direction I want. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm happy with all of that. There's no kind of self-interference. There's gaps in the sheet metal uh, all around. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stick with that base as it is. And now we're, we're kind of ready for some finishing touches, really. So what I'm going to do is to make uh, two new comp components, uh, both of which will be pegs peg like so. Um, different ways to do it. I, I know it's 10 millimeters in diameter, uh, and that's fine. If I make these pegs out of wood, I'll want it to be something close to a, an interference fit. So if I specify them as 10 and the hole as 10, it should, should hold reasonably tight. Um, but what I might even do is to, to sketch on top of there, just turn the visibility off on the letters so I don't confuse myself and project uh, the edge of the hole so that if I change the size of the hole later, I think that will mean the, the peg automatically changes its size as well. And I'll say OK on that. And then what I want to do, I might as well build this uh, so it's in the right place. So I'm going to finish that sketch extrude that sketch I've just made uh, in two directions. So the downward one, uh, which is this one, I don't know which, uh, I'm going to say, uh, I guess that's side one, uh, and I'm going to say go to bottom of the uh, uh, the box, that face there, and that seems to have worked OK. And then side two, I'll make a distance, and I'm going to make that uh, 40 millimeters. So the, <laughs> that did not work as I'd intended it to. Um, let's go back and start that again. Uh, I'm going to pull it up and uh, down, the one that's currently five, instead of making it a distance, I'll make it two object and the bottom of the box. Let's see what that looks like. It doesn't really seem to be liking that. Hmm, not quite sure what's going on there. Well, let's do it differently. Let's put the section analysis back on, if we can, which we can, and just extrude it directly. Uh, so if I drag it down, 
looking all the time here. Uh, if I extrude it 10 millimeters, it works out fine. And then 40 uh, upwards uh, will give me uh, a 50 millimeter high peg, which is about what I want. And the whole thing should be a new body. Um, so that's okay. I, I mean, I guess I fiddled around with that a bit. I knew I wanted a 50 millimeter peg. I could just have made a 50 millimeter um, circular cylindrical object pretty straightforwardly and then put it in place later. Uh, and that might have been a smarter way to do it. There's always lots of ways to do things in fusion. But anyway, uh, that now looks like what I want. I'll turn this analysis view off again. Um, and uh, I will um, copy this peg, create a copy. Ah, okay. Uh, I, it, it, there was a message saying you can't do that because it contains the active component. So I need to go back to the, the whole uh, model here. Now create a, uh, say, move or copy. So right click, move or copy, uh, create a copy of that peg. And I think if I just slide this, um, we said the the gaps in this were 46. So I think if I make this 46 times two, uh, let's try 40, ah, 192 divided by two, then that'll line up perfectly. So it's uh, 48 or 96 are the numbers I need. And you know, it's worth sometimes with these measurements, making a note of them. Again, uh, there are different ways I could do things. I could have just put this second peg anywhere and then used the align tools to get it where I wanted to be afterwards. But now those pegs are where I want them to be. Um, and I'm going to say that is all good. And I guess the last thing I need to do is to cut some holes for the pegs in the bottom of the letters. So let's go back to the letter B, uh, turn off the visibility on everything else, turn on the visibility on the letter, uh, look at it from the bottom, sketch on uh, this plane here. I'm not going to be ultra precise about finding the center of this, I think. I'm just going to be happy enough to have it roughly in the center. And we want a 10 millimeter uh, circle, which we can extrude upwards. That's worked fine. And now I can extrude cut that. Uh, and I think I don't want to go 15 millimeters up, so I'll go 12. That leaves me, in fact, I'll go 10. I'm not quite sure how much room I'm going to have on the letter L. So let's go better safe than sorry. Uh, if I turn on the analysis, do I see where that cut falls? No, because the B isn't lined up correctly. I sort of feel now that I've done that, that this hole is too far towards the curves. Better to have it more on the flat section. Again, maybe I'm just being fussy, um, but I'm just going to drag this all back a bit to there. So finish sketch. And now that whole, you know, that's where I want the peg to fit in the letter B. So that looks fine. Uh, good. Now I will uh, turn on the letter L and its visibility. Um, one thing that can be tricky now is because this is sculpted, it's hard to find a flat face to sketch on. So what I'm going to do is sketch on uh, the letter L drop below this plane. Maybe uh, let me just do one more thing, which is to I could create a new plane. I could, there are various ways I could do this. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the top level, uh, drag this letter L up a bit. And then go back to the letter L and say, create sketch. Ah, of course, <laughs> that's its internal um, ground plane, not, not the ground. It's the ground plane associated with the 
origin associated with the component letter L, not the one associated with the, the whole um, practice test, but I can choose that one from the whole practice test as well. And as long as I haven't rotated anything, maybe that'll work best. Let's try that. And I'll say capture position. I'm just going to turn that origin off now. And I want to sketch a circle. Again, it's hard to say exactly what's centered. Um, if I put it there, let's see how that comes out. I could, you know, I could make measurements and generally be more precise. I possibly should have aligned this with uh, the origin planes more carefully so I could use them as as guidelines and, and guide planes, but it'll be OK. Um, I'm going to go with it as it is. So it looks like about 46 we start to cut. We want to go in about 12, so I'm going to, that takes me to uh, 58. Let's just have a look at that from the front. That looks fine. If anything, I could go slightly further in on that one, um, but I'm happy enough with that. Um, OK, so I've got those holes in place. Uh, and now I'm, I'm going to turn all the visibility back on and look at the whole set. And do some aligning to get the B and the L onto the pegs. So I'll say modify align. And then you kind of, the align idea is you pick two faces that you want to line up. Um, if I just turn off the base, what I'm going to say is I want this, um, the, the top of the circular cutout there to line up with the top of the peg there. And that looks pretty good. I can say, OK, I'm happy with that. And then I'll do the same for the letter L. I'm just going to move it so I can see everything clearly. And I'll say modify align. Uh, and do the same thing, the top of the circular cutout with the top of the peg and say OK. And that looks good. I'm happy with all of that. You could go straight on rather than doing a line and then assemble. You can do everything directly using the assemble tools. It's another option and it's, it's not wrong. And in fact, sometimes that's exactly what you want to do. Uh, good. I guess I'm happy with the way everything's sitting there. Maybe you could make the case that there's not enough overlap between the peg and the letter B. And so I should redesign the whole letter to make the peg insert um, longer and therefore make the whole thing more stable. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to say this is really OK for, for what it needs to be. Um, and certainly within the practice test, we'd be um, not expecting you to, to get that level of detail right. And then you can just look at this. Uh, I just turned on this section view again. You can just look at it and kind of make sure does everything seem to be uh, lining up OK and looking OK in the section view. And again, I'm going to say yes, it does. I'm happy with that and turn off that section view. OK, and we're nearly complete. Uh, now I will um, do my assembling. So first of all, I'm going to take the base and the two pegs and make them a rigid group. Uh, capturing position, I want everything. I just aligned the B and the L, so I want to make sure I keep them where they are. So I'll say capture position. We've got three items in our rigid group, and I'll say OK. And I'm going to ground the base. It's always easiest in assemblies if you've got something grounded, which means it won't move. And now these pegs won't move either. The letter B still will move, but at the moment I don't want it to, so I'm going to revert that to where I'd aligned it. Um, we don't want the, the letters to move except to rotate, so I'm going to make a new as-built joint. As-built means everything's in position already, I just want to tell it to make this a joint. If everything wasn't in position, if the letter B was 
somewhere I didn't want it to be, I'd use the joint option and then it would allow me to do the locating and the, the fixing all together. But because I've done that work aligning my letters, I'm just going to jump straight to an as built joint. It's between the letter B and this peg. And now I want to say it's a revolute joint. So there's some rotation allowed. And you can see it's still asking me where should that rotation be? And I need to choose a an axis of rotation. And if I just choose the outside of the cylinder, that works fine as a, an axis of rotation. In fact, it's chosen to do it on the z-axis, or to describe it as the z-axis, which is also absolutely correct. Same thing again now for the letter L. It's a revolute joint between the letter and the peg, and the axis of rotation is uh, the same as the axis of the cylinder. If you change the joint type, you'll be asked for different things to snap to potentially. So um, it's worth just trying a few different joints, working out what you have to give. If, if you want a sliding joint, you usually have to define a plane or again an, a, an axis or a direction for sliding. Um, uh, and the software is reasonably helpful about um, guiding you through that process. But you can also just you know, keep trying things uh, and gradually you'll get a feel for what you can choose as a as a guide to motion um, and you can always undo things using control z okay uh, this is now pretty good uh, i'm going to turn off the visibility of the joints if you see like little arrows like this uh, you see those two those are telling you what the joint is defined as and somewhere, I think, I guess there'll be something telling me what the rigid group is as well. Um, but usually we don't particularly want to see those, so uh, we'll turn off the visibility. Uh, and I can check, yeah, that letter B and that letter L revolve as I want them to, but they don't move up and down or out of position in any other way. So I'll, I'll straighten them up again and be happy with that. Okay, um, now we're... Uh, on finishing touches, I'm going to start applying materials. So I right click and select physical material. Uh, we're told that the two letters are going to be 3D printed and I know we can 3D print from ABS. So I'm just going to specify that as being ABS. Uh, and similarly, the letter L. ABS. You can do things differently if you want to. Uh, this is there's a lot of free reign in this. Uh, I'll close that for now because then I'll go and specify the pegs, uh, the physical material for the pegs. I've just said, or in my mind, they're just cut from a length of dowel. You know, I'd probably try and find something we had sitting around for this. I'm sure there's 10 millimeter stuff in the workshops that we can just use. So I'm not going to worry too much about what they are. I'm just going to specify them as wood. And any wood that we happen to have will do. Now I think if I close, because I copied one peg from the other, usually the material will copy across as well. And it has, as you can see. Um, and I think with the base, because we've done it out of sheet metal, it will have defaulted to be uh, some kind of standard steel. That was one of the options uh, when when I was setting up the the sheet metal um, parameters and I made it two millimeters thick. I could also have changed the material, but again, I, I just used whatever two millimeter plate material we had in the workshops, not being too fussy. And so some kind of default steel is just fine by me there. And now, finally, I've clicked A for appearance uh, because I want to maybe just give uh, a paint color on my letters. Uh, and I'm going to go with one of them being red, I'll go with the B being red, and one of them being yellow. Um, that's just to make it look nice, and I'd have to apply that as a coat of paint on my um, 3D prints after they were done. And I've turned off I, um, one thing to note when I was doing the sculpting, uh, because 
I've been doing sculpting before. Um, it was on shaded with visible edges only, which meant I could see more clearly what I was doing in the sculpting. But then at the end, sometimes it's easiest to go back to shaded just so you get the slightly more uh, realistic view of things. Um, I'm just going to save that because that is pretty much um, all built, I'll say. And I hope everyone can see as well how you could actually make this in the workshops. Um, for the sheet metal, for example, if I go to the base, uh, you can um, ask for a flat pattern of that base, like so. And then you, you could get that flat pattern uh, dimensioned up. You, you can export it as a drawing, find all the dimensions, cut it out of a sheet of steel. And again, in the workshops, we have uh, metal benders, which would allow you to, to shape it as you want to. Um, so you could make that base um, in the workshops tomorrow, if, <laughs> if it wasn't for the pandemic, at least. Um, OK, I'll say finish that flat pattern. Similarly, I think everyone can envisage how you could um, create the um, dowels uh, or the, the pegs um, by cutting up a length of uh, 10 millimeter uh, wooden rod. And uh, you could talk to Tony Hope uh, or to uh, Silvio and get them to, to talk you through the process of uh, 3D printing these two parts if you had them. So, you know, you can, you can make all of this in our workshops using the, the skills you already have. Um, just a few finishing touches. Uh, we might say, OK, it's nice to have a really nice uh, rendered image of this. I've set up the lighting a bit weird somehow in my uh, last rendering I was doing. So I might just move the uh, position of the light. Something like that's maybe a bit better. Uh, everything else is looking pretty OK there. Um, and in fact, if I do an in-canvas render of that, uh, save before you render somehow, sometimes at least on my Fusion, if I don't save before I render, it can look a bit glitchy. Uh, and then you get a sense of what this, this ornament is going to look like. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. And maybe I'll stop and ask Fusion to do a, a cloud render for me, um, just so I've got that available. And I could put it into my portfolio, for example, um, and make sure I've shown that I've done that work. Uh, and then the other thing that we've talked about, uh, if I just go back to the design, uh, we want to produce a drawing from the design uh, we'll draw, create a drawing of the full assembly on an A3 standard ISO sheet. I think it'll come out about the right size if I rem remember correctly. Uh, if I do it at one to one and I ask for the view to be northeast isometric, uh, then that looks pretty good to me. And I will have it shaded because um, this is more... Uh, an overview and how it's assembled uh, drawing than it is a um, detailed drawing of um, what the dimensions are and things like that. I'll say OK. I can choose the table option here uh, to put in a table of parts. Uh, for some reason, the default on the table option is that it goes bottom to top. But that doesn't really uh, sometimes it just looks a bit confusing, bottom to top. And I'll say, OK, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, description here. I, I'm just going to talk about that briefly. Um, you can obviously turn it off. If you don't have any descriptions, you might as well turn it off. And you perhaps don't need them uh, in, in this particular um, drawing. If you have it on, the, the place it's taking its information from, I think, is if you right click uh, maybe we have to go back actually to the original um, um, design. If I right click here on the component, 
and ask for its properties, there's a box here that says description. I can maybe say 3D printed. And then uh, when I go back to the uh, design, I guess, can I ask to update the, let's just see. So this says it's uh, up to referencing the latest version. Something slightly funny's happened because that uh, thing I've just changed has um, disappeared. Let's save. Um, The, the latest version with that description added. Go back through, note that uh, this exclamation mark appeared there. So I could update by clicking on that, that sort of chain link thing. That's how I say, go to the latest saved version, please. Uh, the letter B had somehow turned its own visibility off, um, maybe because it had changed, and I turned the visibility back on. But the, the important thing is now that description that I put in turns up in the table. So that's, if you want to do that, that's how you do it. Uh, and I'm not necessarily suggesting that you, you have to do that or you should do that. And then the last thing that I guess I want to show you uh, before we call it a day is um, that I can edit the title block. I can either, I think, click there to edit or I can right click and say edit title block uh, it's not doing quite what i thought it was going to what happens if we go edit properties oh, okay sorry i'm clicking on the wrong button um edit properties and then i can start double clicking on some of the the content in the title block for example to say the the department is the school of engineering um, and that's how you would edit the, the content in that title block. Um, and I think that's about it. You can move the, the balloons around just to make them slightly um, more uh, helpfully positioned so that things aren't overlapping. The balloons are clearly distinct from the actual design itself. Um, and then you could output to a PDF uh, here. Or you can just, uh, if I produce a snipping tool, so on my computer, I can um, type into the search box, snipping tool, ask for a new snip, uh, stretch it out over all of that. And there is an image that I can file, save as, uh, and upload as, as my output. And then the other output that I need to upload is the um, actual design itself, and again, file, export, um, export it as type .f3d, this archive file, and you can choose where on your computer you want to export it to. So that's the other thing that you need to do. One image and one exported Fusion 360 archive file. Um, we said already that the this is the practice test, and this is a work through for the practice test. The final test will be different but similar. And if you are good at this, you'll be good at the, the final test. We don't want to um, throw in any surprises. That's not what we're here for. If you can do all of these things, you're a competent user of a number of tools in Fusion. And that's really what we want to see. Uh, let's just go back and see if my cloud render is done to finish with. Uh, it's not, um, so I think I'll just uh, leave things there, uh, and maybe I'll put up a copy of the render on the VLE uh, once it's all complete. So that is how to um, do the practice test for um, engineering design for the fusion test, which is coursework three. And again, if you are confident in everything we've done in this um, bit of teaching, then you'll be confident in the final test as well. That's taken about 55 minutes, um, and the exam is uh, about an hour, or it is an hour long. So you'll notice that time is, is reasonably tight. You do, you've got to be able to find everything quite quickly. It's an open book exam, so you can look up any resources you want, but if you're jumping back and forth between you know, YouTube videos and um, 
the test, you may find you just struggle to get it done in time. So you want to make sure that these um, kinds of things are uh, instinctive to you and that comes through practice. Okay, I'll leave it there.